Hello people and welcome back to my channel. It's Ijoma here and in today's video, we are going to learn how to make this collar dress with a leg of Newton sleeve. The sleeve is combined, Ankara and a plain fabric combination. So I'm going to show you guys how I made just the collar and the sleeve. I'll not show you how I made the rest of the gown. Or the dress i'll just show you how i made the collar and the sleeve please do stay tuned and please subscribe to my so i'll cut the sleeve first and i'll cut the ankara part of the sleeve first so the ankara part started from the shoulder and stopped around eight or ten inches depending on where you want your own sleeve to be so the ankara part to stop at eight inches i used eight inches so i'll fold my fabric i'll fold it twice so that when i cut it i will have two sleeve the two sleeves at once so i'll fold and i'll go ahead and fold again so i'll measure my sleeve length my sleeve length is eight inches eight inches plus one inch for seam allowance that is nine inches so i'll first of all draw my curve and i'll measure my sleeve eight inches plus one inch for seam allowance that is nine so i'll mark nine and after marking the nine i'll go ahead and take my round sleeve measurement plus extra two inches and then i'll connect to my curve so i'll go ahead and cut it out and after cutting out you notice that i have two sleeves so if i open it up you see that i have two sleeves right here so i'll keep that one aside and i'll introduce my plain fabric i so i chose to use white you can use any fabric of your choice so i used white for this combination so the sleeve has three segments it has the ankara segment it has the puffy sleeve segment and it has the fitted sleeve the one that started from the from the elbow to the wrist so first of all i'll subtract 15 inches from our shoulder if measuring your sleeve length you measure from your shoulder right so from your shoulder to the elbow is 15 inches i used 15 you can use 12 but i used 15 inches so i'll subtract um 15 inches that is from my shoulder to my elbow and then measure the rest of the sleeve length so as you can see so i'm trying to get the accurate measurement and that is 15 but i made it 14 because i was still trim and for seam allowance then the full length is 25 plus one inch seam allowance that is 26 and i will go ahead and measure my round sleeve that is the ankle and the wrist and the elbow so after that i will connect the measurements and i'll go ahead and cut them out cut it out and if i cut you will see that i have two pieces one for the right sleeve and one for the left sleeve if i open it up you can see so the next that i'll cut is the exaggerated part of the sleeve the if you check the sleeve so well you will see that the middle one has gathers you can see that it looks puffy so i'll go ahead and cut just a straight fabric so i decided to make it um 14 inches long you can make it 13 12 depending on how big or how full you want the puffy part to look so i've cost it and if you check you see that i have two fabrics one for the right sleeve and one for the two pieces one for the right sleeve and one for the left sleeve so if you make gathers this is how it looks like and i'll go ahead and add lining to all of them i want the sleeve to be very 
full and thick so i'll add lining so this is my main bodies i've finished joining it and i used two and a half for my width the neck with the wideness of the neck is two and a half that is five inches and the depth of the front is three inches and depth for the back is 1.5 you can use three inches as the neck width so i cut it but i used 2.5 because I want it to be very fitted around the neck and it also depends on how fat the person is so i'll go ahead and run a stitch around the neck you can see that i did not turn it with a lining because i'll add a collar here so i'll run a stitch to hold the fabric and the lining together and what i'll do is to take my round measurements the round neck measurements but i will not include the zipper allowance let me mark it so that it'll be easier for you guys to understand i will not include the zipper allowance i will start from the point where my zipper will stop and measure my round neck so i'll start from this point and measure to the other end and i got um 17 inches so I got 17 inches, then I'll measure my zipper allowance, that is one inch on both sides, one, one inch on both sides, and that is two inches. So 17 for your round neck and two inches for the zipper allowance. So the length of the collar stand will be 19. My collar has a collar stand, I will not fix it directly to the neckline. So the length of the collar plus the zipper allowance will be 19 inches and the width will be one inch but i'll make it two for now because i'll still trim off some things while joining so i'll mark the length of my i'll mark the length of my color stand and that is 19 that is 17 plus two inches for zipper allowance that is 19 and i'll go ahead and mark that so well and i'll cut I'll open it up. It will be two pieces. The color stamp will be two pieces. One for the, let me say, one for the main fabric and one for the lining. So I'll go ahead and notch the midpoint, the center of this color stand. I'll notch the center because this is where I'll place at the center of my neckline and I'll divide it into two. Like I told you guys, the color stand will be two pieces. We have a more complicated way of doing this, but I'm just trying to do this particular straight one so that it will be easy for beginners to grab. So this is it and this is the center. The next thing that I'll do is to cut the main collar is to cut the main color of the of the dress so the round neck is 17 inches and i want the width of my color to be two inches but i'll make it three two inches plus one inch for seam allowance that is three so um the major length is 17 divided by two and that is 8.5 i'll not add the zipper allowance because this color will not extend to the zipper allowance so i'll mark um 8.5 plus one inch that is 9.5 so i marked 9.5 17 divided by 2 is 8.5 plus one inch seam allowance that is 9.5 so i marked 9.5 and i marked three inches remember that i'm just cutting one piece of the color because it is a two-piece color so i'm just cutting one side so after cutting this one, I will use it and cut out the other side. So I'll divide this into two. If you want, you can leave it on fold like this. But I decided to divide it into two because I want to run a stitch there. Then I'm trying to cross check my measurements. So if you want it to have a very prominent V shape at the center, if you check, it has a V shape or triangular shape. You can come in by half an inch on both sides. That is at the center. One side is for the center and one side is for the back. You can come in by half an inch on both sides 
and you will slant. That is if you want the V shape to be well defined. But if you don't want it to be too defined, you can just leave it this way. So after cutting for one for one p for one side, I'll go ahead and cut for the other side. So I'll place it this way and I'll go ahead and cut. So that is it for the two colors, the two, two, two sides of the color. So this is my color stand. So I'll illustrate how it look like. So this is it. And you can see the V shape of the color is showing a bit. So you might be wondering where our zipper allowance is. So remember that I added, um, I will use half an inch to turn this color, the main color. So after turning it with half an inch on both sides, it will, the one inch will come out, it will reduce by one inch. And after joining it to the color stand, the one inch for the zipper allowance will come out. So after reducing it by half an inch on both sides, the one inch for the zipper allowance to come out at the collar stand. I don't know if you get any, if you have any question, please do drop it. So I added um, a collar gum to each piece, not to all of them, but to each piece of the collar, I added a collar gum to one side, just one side. And the collar stand as well, I added a collar gum to just one side, just one side of the collar. So I'll go ahead and, of the collar stand, sorry. So I'll go ahead and turn this collar. I'll turn only the down parts, because the upper parts, I'll join it to the collar stand. I don't know if you grab. I will turn just the down part of the collar. Then the other part of it, the down part and the side, I join just the sides and the down part. Then the upper part is where I will join to the collar stand. So I will trim off the seam allowance. I don't want it to be much. I will trim it off before I turn so that the pointy parts will be well defined. So after doing this, I'll go ahead and iron the both of them. And after ironing, this is how it looks like, or this is what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and join them to my color stand. I'll join just to one side of the, I'll join them to just one piece of the color stand, then I will use the other one and turn it. So I'm trying to join from the center. That's why I notch the center. You place one to the center and so then you place the other one and so as you can see my zipper allowance is out. The one inch from my zipper allowance is out. So I'll go ahead and join the other side, the other color. So I'll start from the middle as well and join. So after joining, I'll trim my threads and this is how it looks like. So I'll go ahead and turn it with the other piece of the color stand. So I'll open it up and I'll top stitch. And this is how it looks like. I'll open it. It is not relaxed for now. That's why I said that I'll top stitch it. So I'll open it up and top stitch on one side. This side that I'm top stitching will be on the inside. So 
So I'll go ahead and iron it so well. I'll give it a nice press and I'll come back and show you guys how to attach it to your neckline. So I'll finish ironing it and this is how it looks like. It is so firm. Please do remember to add your collar gum. If you don't have a collar gum, you can use a hard gum. So I'll trim the collar stand so that both of them will be equal. Like I said, I want it to be just one inch, just one inch, not up to one inch. So I'll place the middle to the midpoint of the neckline. And I'll sew from the inside first. I'll turn it this way and I'll sew from the inside. So I'll turn the other side and join. So I'll turn it and fold the collar stand over. You can see how I'm folding it in. I'll fold the rough edge in and I'll join. And I'll run a stitch on top. So guys, I forgot to tell you that, please, before you attach the collar to your neckline, please do remember to join the sides of the, to close the sides of the collar stand. So this is my sleeve. And I'll show you how to eliminate the joinings on the sleeve. So this is the the fitted part. I will join. I will do my gathers. I will pleat the one side of the of the gathers. I will do the gathers on the fitted part. But as you can see, my lining is different. I have already turned the fitted part into a lining, but I did not run a stitch at the upper part. So I did my gathers on the upper part and after doing the gathers, I will use the lining for the fitted part to cover my joining. Like I'll fold it over and then cover it with my lining. So when I turn it, this is what I'll get. So this is the inside and if you turn it out, the joint part is looking neat. So the next thing I'll do is to do I repeat the same thing on the other sleeve. So I'll do my repeat my gathers on this sleeve and after doing the gathers, I'll cover the joint parts with the lining, the lining of the fitted parts, the lining of the um, elbow to the wrist part. So I'll trim off the excess allowance and I'll go ahead and fold over and join. The next thing that I will do after doing this is to introduce the Ankara part. So in order to cover the joining at the Ankara part as well, I'll have to do play and um, do my gathers on the Ankara. As you can see, I'm pleating the plain fabric on the Ankara. And after that, as you can see, I did not add the Ankara lining here. I did not add the lining for the Ankara here. So after doing the gathers, I'll use the lining to cover or to turn this um, 
joined parts so the joining will not be showing the aim of doing this thing is to eliminate the joinings on the inside so i'll add my lining so this is it the only part that I will overlock is just the side. After shaping the hand, I will overlock the sides. So I will repeat the same thing on the other sleeve. I will do my gathers on my Ankara. And after that, I'll cover the joint parts with a lining. So after doing this, the next thing that I will do is to take your measurements for your wrists, for your elbow, and for your upper arm. So that's just because the, um, the middle part has a gather. At that point, you don't need to measure anything because it will be free and full. So you just take your measurements for your wrist, for your elbow, and for your upper arm. And that is also, I'm going ahead to shape it. I've taken my measurements and I'll go ahead and shape the sleeve. So after that, I'll repeat the same thing on the other sleeve. So I'll fit the sleeve in order to make sure that it is okay. If it needs um, adjustment, you can go ahead and do your adjustment. So I'm shaping the other sleeve and after that you go ahead and add your join your sleeve to your bodies or to your bustier and after doing that you join the upper parts of the gown to the lower parts of the gown and then add your zipper add your zipper. If you are adding your zipper please make sure that it stops at the um collar stand because the type of cutting that I did here, I did it in a way that the zipper will reach the collar stand. It will only stop at the collar stand. The main collar will not, um, you will not attach the zipper to the main collar. Like if I turn the back of this dress, you will notice that the zipper stopped at the collar stand. So this is the finished look of the dress. And thank you guys for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that anytime I upload a new video, you will be notified. So this is the back of my dress. The zipper stopped at the collar stand. So thank you guys for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.